welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne. I hope that you know me by now because you've been following me just like religiously and that you have been enjoying all of the amazing people that I have, I've met and introduced to you. And I am particularly excited about my guest today. I know I say that a lot, but I have to say, David has kind of knocked my socks off. So I have to tell you a little bit about him. So David, Sean Klein, do you use the Sean when you're, um, David, do you use that uh, when you're publishing? It's only for publishing because I, I learned that there are a couple of other David Kleins and they're all over Google. So I had to use my middle name. Yes. Yeah, so if you're looking for him and we're going to tell you more later how you can find him. But David Sean Klein, that's the same reason I had to put my E in there, because there's other Karen Osborne's out there writing. Ah. So David Sean Klein, his debut novel, The Money, was named Book of the Year by BestThrillers.com. It was featured in the 2021 Super Lawyers magazine. Critics have compared the money to the works of Walter Mosley, one of my faves, Raymond Chandler, James Patterson, and Rex Stout. I don't know Rex Stout. I have to look that one up. David is also a short story writer. Two of his pieces taken from the money, that's like a standalone short story taken straight from the novel, were published in the Hudson Review and nominated by its editors for the prestigious Push Cart Prize and for inclusion in Best American Mystery Stories. I mean, wow. And in addition, he's a poet and was nominated for Best New Poets in 2019. Welcome, welcome, David. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you again. So good. I'm just so glad to have you. So tell our audience about your writing journey, because you were a lawyer. You were you had you had another life before this. So, yeah, where did writing come in? Well, I'm still a lawyer and I've written here and there all my life. But around 2017, I began to draft what eventually became the money. Uh, and that's where this real writing journey began. So you say you were writing all your life. So did you write short stories as a young person? Did you write po? You, you obviously you wrote poems. Was that something you did when you were in elementary school, high school? Well, I started. Well, I started writing uh, musicals, and I've written some plays, and uh, I had a couple of essays that I had published. And the poetry started only recently, but then I stopped. I realized I'm not that good at it. Um, and so, yeah, so I would write here and there, um, you know, while doing law. But then recently, like around, again, around 2017, I wanted to take writing a bit more seriously. And I wanted to see if I could begin and end a novel, including revision. And that became the money. That became the money. And before we get there, we're going to tell you all about the money and you're going to hear about the book. But I want to ask you another question. So musicals. So you play an instrument, you sing. No, no. Uh, once upon a time, <laughs> I was a performer and I loved uh, Broadway musicals. So I was a lyricist. And um, yeah, so for a time, I was uh, mentored by the great Hal Prince who had directed uh, Phantom of the Opera and uh, produced uh, a million you know, Sondheim's musicals. And so I was trying to write Broadway musicals and I, I, I gave that up and I went to uh, uh, law school. Um, yeah, but that was, my, that was my Broadway musical time of life. Cool. You know, it's one of the things that I find so interesting when I do these interviews is that really I'm not speaking to a writer, I'm speaking to a creator because we create, right? We create in so many different ways and, um, and, and lyrics and poetry are probably very akin, I would think, writing poetry and writing lyrics. Yeah, well, it's all words, it's language, it's the music of language, um, the rhythm of language. Yeah, so I think it's all connected. Yeah, so tell us about the money. All right. So this is the hard part when you have to digest an entire story. Um, every writer hates to blurb his own, you know, write a synopsis. But 
So the money concerns a small time lawyer named Henry Krakow. And Henry prides himself on fighting only for the little guy. And he's married to this very high powered marketing, marketing executive named Olivia. And he's crazy about her. Uh, but Henry and Olivia are on the outs. And to win back Olivia's respect, Henry tries to help a single father to keep his two children. But his good deed goes all wrong. And it plummets him into this rabbit hole of corruption concerning millions and millions of dollars uh, of money earmarked for the victims of Hurricane Sandy. So wow. Henry has to try and work himself out of this, uh, this rabbit hole of corruption. His whole goal is to get back to Olivia and hope that he earns her love and respect again. Wow, that is so cool. And so is it, would you call it, so it's not a legal th thriller, no, definitely not a legal. So, so what's what genre would you say that it, it's in? It's a it, it, it's a, it's a mystery thriller, but it's basically, but in my view, mm -hmm. it's a romantic comedy because, in my view, Henry's entire uh, journey is about getting back to Olivia. Um, mm -hmm. So it's real, and, and it's a comedy because uh, I'm not going to give out give away the whole ending, but in my view, it ends up uh, all's well. Uh, so it is a mystery thriller. Uh, with and, little, and with a little bit romance. of a, a little bit of romance for sure, and a lot of sex and violence. Oh, a lot of sex, graphic sex and violence. Uh, no, no, the sex is totally not graphic because of, of who Henry is. Um, he loves his wife very much, so he's not going to fool around. And um, uh, the violence is not graphic. It's um, because this is a comedy, so it's um, it's violent, but it's funny violence. Yeah, cool. Yeah. That sounds very, very interesting. And uh, one of the things that uh, you you mentioned when we were just chatting before we we started recording was that you're also a teacher, that you teach writing. And I was very interested to hear um, when you're teaching and helping other people of other people write. Do you learn something too? Is there a lesson? Do you get? Do you find that you have lessons learned from the teaching process? Yeah, I think so because um, I've taught high school students and I taught a a, cl a college class, and yeah, I definitely learned because I'm trying to um, hammer home with the kids the importance of, for instance, telling a story and keeping the audience interested and not getting too caught up in you know cerebral ideas not getting too caught up in showing off with language. And these are all, I guess the, the things that I try to emphasize with the uh, kids are the very things that I'm always trying to remind myself of. So when I walk away, yes, it's like all these lessons have been essentialized um, through my connection with the students for sure, as well as just reminding myself how much I love to write and especially how much I love to, to read. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I always find that when I'm teaching, um, I learn something because just the breaking down of something to explain it to somebody else reminds me of lessons and 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 things that I that I have learned and maybe forgot. So, what's your writing process? Do you write? Well, first of all, are you writing something right now? Do you have any works in progress? Yeah, so I have a uh, a children's book coming out in June. And I'm working on two novels, both of which are also mysteries. Trying to and get the children's started. book. Tell us the title. So it's called Sherlock Mendelssohn and the Missing Afi Coleman. And it's a Passover book. Uh, and it's basically where a, a young boy named um, Sherwood Mendelssohn, who considers himself to be Sherlock Holmes' greatest fan, uh, during uh, his family's Passover Seder, the Afi Coleman goes missing for real. And uh, he and his um, uh, trusty associate, Watson, have to find the missing Afi Coleman. Wow. Watson is the family's dog. <laughs> That's even better. What age group is the story aimed at? Eight to 10. Eight to 10. Very cool. And June. I have a book coming out in June, too. Oh, that's great. Really, oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Um, Reckonings comes out June 16th. And there it is right behind you. <laughs> And how come yours isn't? Where's your cover? That's true. I don't. I, I didn't get it yet. Oh, the money. That's true. I could have put the money up, but I didn't. Yeah. 
That's all right. We're going to put it up on the on the screen for you guys. So Thank you're going you. to see the cover when we post this, this Thank wonderful um, video. So one of the things that <clears throat> we both are are readers, because I don't know any writers who are not readers. So what's in your to read pile? OK, well, I'm going uh, I'm going taking a short vacation uh, in a couple of weeks. And so I'm taking um, a couple of the Don Winslow, uh, the um, his surfing detective novels, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm taking a life of Dostoevsky, and I hope to get through three books in uh, in ten days. That sounds that sounds ambitious. Excuse me. <laughs> it is. That does sound ambitious. Are you going alone? No, I'm going with my wife. I usually eat so much on vacation that I that I have to nap a lot, so I, I may not get through one book. <laughs> and what um, books could you recommend to our audience that you finished? Well, yeah, like these are books that I just happen to really, really love. And I, I think right now for a while, my favorite book is Willa Cather's Shadows on the Rock. Mm. And uh, I just, it, it's just a, the most beautiful book. Um, and I would very highly recommend that book. Uh, other books that are that have meant a lot to me are the uh, Chester Himes Harlem Detective series, which are absolutely terrific and, and so entertaining. Mm. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, I would, I would, and you know, well, for me, anything by uh, by Melville, especially Billy Budd, um, yes, Moby yeah. Dick, yeah, yeah, and uh, then. From a mystery point of view, although this book, in my view, is is really just as much a literary book as a mystery book, is Double Indemnity by James M. Cain. Mm -hmm. To me, he's overall just a terrific writer. I, um, I love Mildred Pierce. Um, the Postman Always Rings Twice. But if you're a mystery writer and, and you want to not just have a great time, but learn something, I think Double Indemnity is just one of the greatest of all time. A great, a great book to teach. No, we do read to learn. That's, I mean, for entertainment, but as writers, we read to learn as well. So thank you. We, I think we have a lot of authors that watch us as well as uh, readers that watch us. So this has been, um, this has been so fun, uh, but your audience would like to know how they can find your books, how they can find out more about you. Where can they go online to learn about you and connect with you? Sure. Well, my books are available uh, wherever books are sold, Amazon, um, my publisher, Black Rose Writings uh, website, uh, Barnes & Noble. Uh, my website is uh, davidshawnkline.com. So it's S-H-A-W-N-K-L-E-I-N.com. Uh, uh, yeah, that's where I could be found and my books. Excellent. Excellent. And so we thank you all very much for watching us today. And I hope that you will join us next time. Oh, and don't forget to buy David's books and come back and see us next time for What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? Thank you.